All right, let's talk about the JAS-39 Gripen, a Swedish fighter jet that's all about sleek design and getting the job done. This beauty from Saab is a prime example of that Scandinavian knack for keeping things simple yet highly effective, with every part built to perform on the battlefield. But can it hold its own against heavyweights like the American F-35 Lightning II? Let's dive in and find out. Building a fighter jet that's both cutting-edge and marketable is no walk in the park, especially when defense budgets are getting slashed left and right, even for the big players who've been at it for decades. So, it's pretty darn impressive that Sweden, a country with just over 10 million people, managed to pull off the Gripen program. This multi-role fighter designed for combat, attack, and reconnaissance, hence the JAS acronym, JACT, Attack, Spanning, got its name from a 1982 contest where a flight attendant suggested Gripen after the mythical creature blending a lion's strength with an eagle's smarts. It's a fitting nod to its predecessors like the Saab 35 Draken Dragon and the Saab 37 Viggen Thunderbolt, named after Thor's lightning forged stones. Gotta say, the folklore vibe is spot on. By the late 70s, Sweden's Air Force was itching for a new ride to replace those dragons and thunderbolts. They wanted something affordable, capable of hitting Mach 2, and able to take off from short runways, think 2,625 feet long and 55 feet wide. This wasn't just a whim, it tied into Sweden's Cold War era BAS-90 system, a clever setup where they spread their air force across multiple small bases to dodge nuclear strikes or enemy attacks. Each base hosted a squadron of 8 to 12 planes making it tough for anyone to wipe out the whole fleet and giving Sweden staying power in a fight. The goal was clear, build a fighter smaller than the Viggen but with equal or better range and payload. Early ideas for the JAS program included the Saab 38, a single-engine attack jet, and the Saab A-20, a souped-up Viggen for fighter, ground attack, and maritime recon roles. Sweden even toyed with buying foreign jets like the F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-A-18 Hornet, F-20 Tiger Shark, or the French Mirage 2000. But in the end, they doubled down on going homegrown crafting a lightweight, single-engine, single-seat jet with a canard design, intentional instability, and fly-by-wire tech. The canard wasn't random. Sweden had great feedback from the Viggen, one of the first mass-produced canard jets, with 329 built. Those forward canards provide lift at all speeds, while the Delta Wing counters the rear stabilizer's drag at high speeds. The unstable design balanced by digital fly-by-wire boosts maneuverability and cuts drag, making the Gripen a nimble beast. Plus, angled canards double as air brakes, shortening landing distances for those BAS-90 bases. The baseline Gripen models run on a Volvo RM12 turbofan, a tweaked version of General Electric's F404 fed by a Y-shaped air duct. The RM12 got upgrades for better performance, reliability, and resistance to bird strikes, all tailored for single-engine safety. By 2010, the Gripen had racked up over 143,000 flight hours without a single engine failure. Pretty impressive for a single engine jet. The newer Gripen E or Next Generation steps it up with the F414G engine, an enhanced F414 pumping out 23% more thrust, 22,000 pounds versus 18,000. This lets the Gripen E hit Mach 1.1 with a full payload, a rare feat among fighters. The F414G also boasts an 8000 hour service life and 15 to 20 percent better fuel efficiency than the rm12 the gripen's tech is where it really shines its sensor fusion system using 5 mil steed 1553b data buses makes it a programmable jet want to boost performance add new roles or support cutting edge gear just push a software update not unlike the f-35's approach the original PS05A radar from Ericsson and GEC Marconi got swapped in the Gripen E for the Raven East 05, an ASA radar with a wider field of view and better range thanks to the Skyward G Earth sensor for spotting low radar signature targets beyond visual range. Armament-wise, the Gripen packs a 27mm Mauser BK-27 cannon and plays nice with weapons like the AIM-9 Sidewinder, AGM-65 Maverick, and RBS-15 anti-ship missile. A 2010 MS-19 upgrade added compatibility with MBDA Meteor long-range missiles, Iris-T short-range missiles, and GBU-49 laser-guided bombs. Total weapons load? About 14,330 pounds, including recon pods like Saab's modular reconnaissance pod or Thales's digital joint reconnaissance pod.
In today's electronic warfare game the Gripen's got a slick integrated suite that can jam enemy radars actively or stay sneaky in passive mode. Saab's EWS system includes a 360-degree missile warning setup, secure comms via Saturn, Link-16, and satellite uplinks plus gear for long-range missions like an in-flight refueling probe and an onboard oxygen system in newer models. The single-seat JAS-39C and two-seat JAS-39D got a boost in 2013 when Saab introduced the Bright Cloud Active Jammer, a disposable decoy. By 2014 they added a modular self-protection unit for enhanced survivability. Now here's where things get interesting. With stealth tech dominating aviation, why didn't Saab go all in on it for the grip and E? Their answer? Stealth's not the be-all, end-all. As radar tech evolves, stealth jets are becoming easier to spot, and retooling an airframe for stealth is a costly nightmare. Instead, Saab leaned into advanced electronic warfare and rapid deployment tech, keeping the grip and competitive without breaking the bank. Magnus Gorg from Saab put it best, you can turn around a Gripen for air-to-air -air missions in just 10 minutes, refuel, rearm, and back in the fight. That's perfect for Sweden's BS-90 setup, needing minimal logistics and a small crew. Compare that to the F-35, where stealth comes with a hefty price tag and complex maintenance. Speaking of costs, the Gripen's a bargain. A JAS-39C-D runs about $30, $40 million while the Gripen E hits $50, $60 million depending on the setup. An F-35, you're looking at $80, $90 million. Buyers have to ask, do you want a flashy stealth jet or a reliable workhorse? Saab's bet on non-stealth tech has paid off, with over 300 Gripens built, more than 100 sold to countries like Brazil, South Africa, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Thailand. So what's the deal with the Gripen versus the F-35? It's a trade-off. The F-35's stealth and advanced sensors are top tier, but the Gripen's agility, low cost, and quick deployment make it a contender, especially for nations needing a versatile fighter without the F-35's overhead. Sweden's proven you don't need a massive budget to build a jet that punches above its weight. If you're as pumped about the Gripen as I am, swing by Control Lost on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and tap the bell for more deep dives into military tech. Got thoughts on whether the Gripen can outshine the F-35? Drop them below. Catch you in the next one.